Hi everyone and welcome to this week's World's End History Story. This week I am covering the story of another of the tragic pit disasters that took place at War's End Colliery and this one happened in December of 1838 with the tragic loss of 11 lives. War's End Colliery was a great employer of many men and boys in the early 1800s It would no doubt have been seen as a job where the work would have been constant as most of the collieries had many tons of coal still waiting to be, well, basically dug out. Collery jobs also often came with collery houses, meaning those who worked there did not just have jobs, but they also had homes to live in too. However, as this was a time when health and safety was not really thought of, the ages of those working in the collieries could range from as young as five years old up to those in their 80s. Of course, this was also a time before retirement, so people did continue to work into what we would call their old age. And I have to admit to wondering how they coped, as I'm not even close to 80 yet and I would not like to be doing the same kind of heavy work that those men were doing, nor would I have wanted to do the work as a child. When I was five years old, all I wanted to do was play with me toys, but things were, as said, much different then. And for those wondering, the confirmed age of five years old was from the 1852 pit disaster at Wall's End. Sadly, another thing known to the era of mining in the early days were the accidents and disasters in the collieries. Checks were made daily as to the safety of the mines and, of course, miners were told of dangers such as taking candles into the mines, along with many other things. But, of course, accidents still happened. And I can only imagine that all those who worked underground would have been aware that theirs was a dangerous job and that there was always a chance that they would not come home from work at the end of the day. How many of us would want to do a job like that today? I think the answer would be very few, if any at all. In December of 1838, one such disaster took place just three short years since the 1835 pit disaster, where over 100 men and boys lost their lives in an explosion at G Pit, the story of which most of you will know I have covered in another video. The site of the 1838 disaster was again G Pit, also known as Church Pit, most likely due to its close proximity to St Peter's Church, and sometimes also often referred to as Russell's Old Pit or Colliery. And in 1838, the Colliery was still in the ownership of William Russell. For those who have not seen the previous videos who, or who aren't aware, the remains of G Pit can still be seen today in the form of two capped shafts that can be found inside the grounds of Capstan Park Storage, which is on Hadrian Road, just a few short yards away from the Wagonway Road that runs down from the High Street just before you reach the new Winning Public House. Between 6 and 7 p.m. on Wednesday, December 19, 1838, 11 men went down into the mine to begin their work of preparing the mine for the following day's workers. The men were known as shifters and were working in what was known as the Bencham Seam. Shifters, so the news article of the time stated, were often older men and they would go into the collieries to clear the area of stone and to secure the roof of the colliery by placing wooden props to hold it up. Their work was described as very important as without this, the miners going in to excavate the coal would be put in danger of roof collapse. So though it was said that they were older men, they were no less important to the colliery. At around 9pm on the same night, the miner working on the furnace underground noticed the presence of foul air and the alarm was immediately raised. Searching underground, it was quickly discovered that an explosion had taken place. This, however, had not reached the shaft, so those on the surface were completely unaware that anything was wrong. Several men attempted to enter the pit, but as with previous cases, they were hindered by the obnoxious air. 
It is sadly something that often led to rescue missions being held up for several hours, while attempts were made to rid the mine of the foul air and the possible risk of further explosion. It would not be until midnight before the first body, that of Thomas Rutherford, was found. Then shortly after, at around 2.30am, a further three bodies were found, and this was only four out of the eleven men that were missing. It was stated at the time that the bad conditions meant that the rest of the missing men would unlikely be found for some time, and by Thursday evening no other bodies had been found. Sadly, none of the articles I read stated when the rest were found, but the rescue workers would not have given up until all were found, and no doubt, as with previous disasters, those rescue workers would all be volunteers going into a dangerous situation to search for men they would have known and worked with. An inquest on those who lost their lives was held at the Coach and Horses on the High Street on December the 24th. Although no great detail was given, it was said that several men were questioned, but none were able to offer any evidence to explain how the explosion had occurred. It was said that when the colliery had been examined earlier on the night of the 19th, no issues had been found, and the mine was properly ventilated. No blame was placed on any of those who were in charge of the colliery and its safety checks, and after viewing the bodies of the poor victims, the jury at the inquest had returned a verdict of accidental death in all cases. Sadly, no details were given as to what, if any, compensation was given to the families of those who lost their lives in this disaster, and for many, if they had no one else working at the colliery, they would have also lost their homes, so I do hope that they did receive something to help them survive. And it was also said that since the disaster had taken place, hundreds of people had visited the colliery, some perhaps just to see where the disaster had taken place, but some of those who had gone there would have undoubtedly been the relatives of those who had died. And this always makes me wonder just how it must have felt to be standing on the surface knowing that your husband, your son or brother was lying below ground waiting to be found. It must have been truly awful. Although not stated, I would assume that all of the victims would have been buried in St Peter's Churchyard, just as those from the Heaton Main disaster in 1815, who were mainly Wars End miners, and the 1835 disaster that had all been buried there before them. All, that is, apart from one man by the name of Robert Bones, who was buried at Newburn on December the 21st. Robert had previously been an innkeeper at Throckley, however, he had found this job did not give him enough income to support his family. He was a married man with nine children, so he'd given up the job and found employment at Warzan Colliery. He had never worked in a colliery prior to this, and it seems he had only been working at Warzan for around three days, when he sadly lost his life in this explosion. And it was sadly also noted that Robert's wife was currently unwell, described in some articles as being on her deathbed, so it was possible that her illness and this tragic explosion would have ended up leaving those nine children without either of their parents. I did not find any details of ages for any of the eleven men, but those who lost their lives in this disaster are as follows. William Allerton, who left a wife and two children. Robert Bones, who left a wife and nine children. Thomas Dinning, who left a wife and five children. John Layton, who left a wife and five children. Jacob Madison, who left a wife and what was described as a large family, the number of children is not known. Joseph Roseby, who left a wife and four children. Hugh Rowe, a married man, no children were mentioned. Thomas Rutherford, who left a wife and four children. William Smith, who left a wife and two children. Matthew Towns, who was unmarried and Thomas Wilkinson, who was a married man and no children were mentioned. 
Our history is not always good. Sometimes it covers some very tragic circumstances. And I feel with the Collieries, those who dies, died should always be remembered. They lost their lives by simply going to work to do an important job for the town in the 1800s and to provide for their own families. We should never forget them. And although this disaster is not covered in as much details as the ones from 1815 and 1835 and the ones from later years where more men had died, it is still no less tragic. I do hope that you have found this sad and tragic story interesting and I do thank you all very much for watching and I do hope to see you all again very soon.